CataractCoach.com. The posterior capsule is broken, but we have a toric lens in the eye, a single piece acrylic lens. So now what should we do? This is the case that we've showed recently where there's a break in the posterior capsule, but it's not evident to the surgeon. The surgeon does not know. So the surgeon is implanting the single piece acrylic lens in the capsule bag. And you can see the alignment dots at the haptic optic junction. That's a toric lens. Where you see the purple mark on the limbus, that's the area where the phaco probe inadvertently pierced and punctured the capsule bag at the equator. And the surgeon was unaware of it throughout the case. As a result, now, as the lens is going there, that's causing that opening or that break in the capsule to extend. And there, you see it. It's crescent-shaped and quite large at this time. So now the question is, what are you going to do? There's that big break in the capsule. What can we do? Can we leave it like this? Well, the problem is that break is right where that haptic is. If the haptics were 90 degrees away, it may be stable enough. But because the break is right there where the haptic is, and this is a torque lens, the haptic has to be oriented in that direction, we're going to be in trouble here. So this is not going to have good long-term stability. If you leave it like this, it may be okay initially, but it's going to decenter badly. So again, the surgeon still doesn't know. So eye probe going in the eye, he's trying to lift the lens to go under it to remove viscoelastic. Well, what's going to happen? We're going to prolapse vitreous. As you're aspirating in this point, it's going to prolapse a lot of vitreous. So we don't see it just yet, but it's going to happen. So viscoelastic being removed from behind the IOL, but we're also causing a further extension of that capsule break. Ah, there you see it's even bigger now. And now the surgeon is pulling what he thinks is viscoelastic, but that right there, that's vitreous. That's vitreous, right where that purple ink mark is. So now what do you do? This is the point where the surgeon's thinking. Now this is a resident surgeon who's got good hands. And this is about 300 cataracts done under this doctor's belt so far. But what should you do here? Well... I don't think it's going to be stable enough. So you can try and nudge the lens over a little bit. Remember, sometimes your first instinct is to deny that there was a problem. It's just natural instinct. You think, well, no, it'll be okay. It'll be fine. But that's denial. We have to be honest here. This is going to be an issue. So you can see there's a lot of thinking going on. Certain doesn't know what to do. Trying to put some BSS in there. Probably a good choice now is to put viscoelastic. While you have the eye probe in the eye, and it's infused to prevent further prolapse of vitreous, this is a really good point to put more viscoelastic in the anterior chamber. And we're going to have to explant that lens. I know it looks reasonable now, but it's not going to work. So here's another technique he did to try to keep the anterior chamber formed. And the rexus looks good. It's tempting to leave it like this. But now you can see there we have extensive breakage of the posterior capsule. You can't leave the lens like this. It has to come out. And because it's a single piece lens, you cannot put a single piece acrylic lens in the sulcus. So it has to be explanted fully. So first thing to do is augment with more anesthesia. Second thing is this, which is making another paracentesis and then for, and widen it up sufficiently for 23 gauge instrumentation. And now the second paracentesis, which was made at the beginning, can be just slightly enlarged. So we're gonna end up doing a 23 gauge by manual anterior vitrectomy. So let's get the lens out. So there we see that's where the break is. There's insufficient capsule support, and that haptic is right at the break. And because it's a torque lens, you can't just rotate it and keep the whole thing in the bag. Plus, there is a, a significant amount of vitreous prolapse at this point into the anterior segment. So this lens has to come up. Let's lift it up out of the bag. The eyes full of viscoelastic now. So under viscoelastic, let's get this lens in a safe position up. Keep it in the anterior chamber and we're gonna explant this lens. So nice and easy bringing it up. We can also inject a viscoelastic behind it. In previous videos, we have shown you our twist technique to explant this lens. This is a six, p six millimeter single piece acrylic lens. There's another way you can do as well. This lens is actually very soft and very flexible. And as a result, we can actually just lift it up and we can funnel it at the incision and just pull it out of the same unenlarged 2.8 millimeter incision here. 
So now using a spatula, getting under the IOL, let's lift that IOL up into the anterior chamber. There we go, a little bit better. That's starting to look better. Certainly in doing this, you're gonna have vitreous um, prolapse as well. This patient's going to need a complete anterior vitrectomy. So putting more viscoelastic here, trying to protect the corneal endothelium, keep that IOL away from the endothelial surface. And then to explant it, we're gonna bring one haptic out. We don't need any special instruments here. We're just going to use a straight tying forceps. So there's the straight tying forceps. You can grab onto the IOL and pull it out. And then once you have a nice, very good, strong, firm grasp on that IOL, you don't wanna rip off the haptic. So grab it deeper like this, right at that haptic optic junction. Grab firmly and it'll just funnel and pull out pull and it'll funnel and there it is, it pulls out of the eye. So there's the lens, intact, and now it's time for the anterior vitrectomy. Stay tuned.